friends, it's Mrs. Shemelowitz here to read you one of my new favorite books for the Great Kindness Challenge. I hope that you're all enjoying all the activities that our school has planned for you for the Great Kindness Challenge week. And this is a book that I thought was really important to read um, for a lot of reasons, but mostly because it's not actually a story about being successful at being kind, but it's about to do when what to do when being kind is hard. So it's called Each Kindness by Jacqueline Woodson. I hope you enjoy it. The winter snow fell on everything, turning the world a brilliant white. One morning, as we settled into our seats, the classroom door opened and the principal came in. She had a girl with her and she said to us, this is Maya. Maya looked down at the floor. I heard her whisper, we all stared at her. Her coat was open and the clothes beneath it looked old and ragged and her shoes were spring shoes, not meant for the snow and the strap on one of them had broken. Our teacher, Mrs. Albert said, say good morning to our new student, but most of us were silent. The only empty seat was next to me and that's where our teacher put Maya. And on that first day, Maya turned to me and smiled but I didn't smile back. I moved my chair, myself, and my books a little farther away from her. When she looked my way, I turned to the window and stared out at the snow. And every day after that, when Maya came into the classroom, I looked away and didn't smile back. My best friends that year were Kendra and Sophie. At lunchtime, we walked around the schoolyard, our fingers laced together, whispering secrets into each other's ears. One day, when we were near the slide, Maya came over to us. She held open her hand to show us the shiny jacks and tiny red ball she'd gotten for her birthday. It's a high bouncer, she said, but none of us wanted to play. So Maya played the game against herself. That afternoon, when we got back into the classroom, Maya whispered to me, bet you can't guess who's the new Jack's champion of the world is. Behind me, Andrew whispered, Chloe's got a new friend. Chloe's got a new friend. She's not my friend, I whispered back. The weeks passed. Every day we whispered about Maya, laughing at her clothes, her shoes, the strange food she brought for lunch. Some days Maya held out her hand to show us what she had brought to school, a deck of cards, pickup sticks, a small tattered doll, and whatever she asked us to play, we said no. Boy, look at Maya's face. She looks so sad and left out. I'm feeling uncomfortable right now. How about you? The days grew warmer and warmer. The pond thawed. Grass began growing where snow had once been, and one day, Maya came to school wearing a pretty dress and fancy shoes, but the shoes and the dress looked like they'd belonged to another little girl before Maya. I think she looks pretty. Pink's my favorite color. I have a new name for her, Kendra whispered. Never knew. Everything she has came from a second-hand store. We all laughed, and Maya stood by the fence. She was holding a jump rope, but did not come over to ask us if we wanted to play. After a while, she folded it double, rolled the ends around each hand, and started jumping. She jumped around the whole schoolyard without stopping. She didn't look up once. She just jumped and jumped and jumped. The next day, Maya's seat was empty. In class that morning, we were talking about kindness, kind of like we are this week when we're talking about the Great Kindness Challenge. Miss Albert had bought, brought a big bowl into class and filled it with water. We all gathered around her desk and watched her drop a small stone into it. Tiny waves rippled out away from the stone. This is what kindness does, Miss Albert said. Each little thing we do goes out like a ripple into the world. Then Miss Albert let each of us drop the stone in as we told her what kind of things we had done. Joseph had held the door for his grandmother. Kendra helped change her baby brother's diaper. 
Even mean old Andrew had done something. I carried teacher's books up the stairs, he said, and Mrs. Albert said it was true. I stood there holding Mrs. Albert's rock in my hand, silent. Even small things count, Miss Albert said gently. But I couldn't think of anything, and I passed the stone on. I bet the girl is feeling weird about the fact that she doesn't have anything nice to say, right? And maybe a little guilty. You know, wouldn't you feel that way too if you couldn't think of one nice, kind thing you had done for someone? Maya didn't come to school the next day or the day after that, and each morning I walked to school slowly, hoping this would be the day Maya returned and she'd look at me and smile. I promised myself that this would be the day I smiled back. Each kindness, Miss Albert had said, makes the whole world a little bit better. But Maya's seat remained empty. And one day, Miss Albert announced to the class that Maya wouldn't be coming back. Her family had to move away, Miss Albert said. Then she told us to take out our notebooks. It was time for spelling. Look at that empty desk. How would I feel if I never got a chance to make it right? Hmm. That afternoon, I walked home alone. When I reached the pond, my throat filled with all the things I wish I would have said to Maya, each kindness I had never shown. I threw small stones into it over and over, watching the way the water rippled out and away, out and away. Like each kindness, done and not done. Like every girl somewhere holding a small gift out to someone and that somebody was turning away from it. Wow, look at the girl's face. She looks really sad. I watched the water ripple as the sun set through the maples and the chance of a kindness with Maya became more and more forever gone. And that is the story of each kindness, right? So that was kind of a hard book to read, right? Like I read it and I thought to myself about all the times when maybe I had not been as nice as I could have been to somebody a little bit guilty about it but then I remembered something that I know we talk about a lot at Irwin school and that is is that every day is a new mistake with no mistakes new day with no mistakes in it which means you can always try harder the next day to do your best and even if you didn't have a chance like the girl in this book did to make it right with that person she couldn't make it right with Maya because Maya moved away you could do something nice for someone in your class it could be as simple as giving them a compliment or saying something like, would you like to play with me? Or I would like to be your friend. It's really easy to be nice. It's actually much more work to be mean. Isn't that so weird, right? Being nice is easy. It comes right from our soul. It comes right from the inside of us out to everybody else. And it's the easiest gift you can give to everybody. It doesn't cost anything. So I hope that when you listened to the each, this book, Each Kindness, which I just read to you, it makes you think about not wanting to feel like the girl in this book, but that you want to do something kind for somebody else the next time you have an opportunity to do that. I hope that gives you some good thinking homework about how we can all be nicer to one another. So here's my kindness for you. I can't be with you right now, and I can't be in the same classroom with you right now, but I can tell you two things. I am glad that you are at Irwin School. And I am glad that you are a part of our school community and you are smart and you are wonderful and you have wonderful things that you can give to our school community. All you have to do is try. Try your best and try your best to be kind. Thanks everybody. Have a great day.